Fall at Equestria, The Quiet City, by Gamma Decay, read by Forrest M. Two Days, Part Two. Stiffly, the stallion bit his tongue as he cowered inside the small box, too afraid to use his magic to help stem his bleeding leg. He fought against his strained lungs not to cough or wheeze, Instead, he applied pressure with his other leg and prayed to Celestia that none of the Roman ghouls would sniff him out. I'm a fucking idiot. He cursed himself for his stupid mistake. Letting ghouls spook me like that? How much extra time will this cost me? An hour? Two? A day? Do I even still have the supplies to fix my fucking leg? The stallion fought the urge to lash out against the metal walls. No prize would ever have been worth this. Alright, I'll just deal with it when the shamblers leave. Taking long, slow breaths, he tried to force himself to calm down. I just need to take things one step at a time. The clouds that blanketed the skies had darkened slightly again by the time the stallion had emerged from the burned out dumpster. He whimpered as he used his magic to pull the cap off the final and already mostly empty healing potion. Shakily, he pulled it up to his lips, quickly finishing off the rest of the bottle. He prayed that it would be enough as he lowered the empty glass container softly to the ground. His heavy breathing slowed as he pressed his back against the ruined and blasted building behind him. He found himself shivering and twitching as the healing magic worked to knit up the chunk of flesh that had been stolen from him. He hated the way that healing magic felt, and grimaced as he looked down at his newly repaired skin. While it made his wound mostly whole again, it had not fully healed it. A shallow gouge was worn under his new skin and the patchy radiation burns it had before still showed through. The stallion opened his travel bags, dumping out the sparse assortment of contents that he carried with him. As he did, the box with his remaining fancy buck snack cake tumbled to the ground next to him. Again, his stomach felt the need to let out a terrifically needy gurgle. Picking up the confectionery in his magic, he removed his helmet with his hooves and tore the end of the box open. As he slipped the wrapped cake out, he wasted little time getting through the packaging, shoving the snack cake into his muzzle and chewing noisily. The flavor was overwhelming to him, its sweetness lost in the few moments it took him to scarf down the meager substance. He hadn't savored it like he planned to, but still, he felt content enough to relax slightly. His contentment didn't last long as his lungs seized up and went into a hacking fit of painful coughs. More flecks of blood stained the interior of his helmet as he doubled over in pain. He let out a few retching dry heaves and after a few moments, the stallion gave out a wheezing whine and tried to catch his breath. Reaching his hoof over to his discarded helmet, the stallion tapped on his cracked faceplate. Each light tap was accompanied by spine-tingling crackles and crunches. Looking down at his supplies, he found the mostly used up roll of duct tape sitting among the pile. Carefully, he pulled the dull silver tape up and used his magic to pick at the end of the strip. He applied a few short pieces to his mask from the outside before securing his mask back around his head. He listened as he breathed in and out unsure if his patch job had been enough to seal the cracks. He sighed as he knew it would have to do for now, and that when he stopped for the night he would reinforce the inside. Looking back down to his supplies, his magic wrapped around the one towel he grabbed from his locker room stay last night. He intended to use it whenever it had rained again. However, necessity now called for him to stuff it into the hole in his suit. He used his magic to cram it inside the torn out leg, bunching it up and wrapping around the outside as much as he could. His magic maneuvered the roll of duct tape around, using it to bind the dirty towel securely to his leg. It wouldn't completely seal his suit, 
But again, it would last until he could find the time to use his patch kit before he slept tonight. The soft ticking on his rad meter perked his ears as the wind droned through the empty, silent city. The stallion looked around, taking his surroundings into account again. For a moment, he worried that he might have gotten himself lost in his earlier fit of panic, but he did have one useful guiding marker. The blackened shadows that have been scarred into every brick, crevice, and facet of the ruined city worked well as a rudimentary compass. Every toppled building, tossed cart, and fixed object helped show which way pointed away from the blast zone he'd seen yesterday. The stallion recovered the things he'd dumped on the ground, stuffing them back into his travel bags. With slow, hesitant steps, he made his way down the alley and towards the corpse of the ghoul mare he'd shot. From his bags, he pulled his pistol out again and opened the cylinder. He let out a disappointing sigh as he pulled the three spent casings from it, looking at them for a moment before dropping them to the ground. Shit. He shook his head as he softly closed the cylinder again. Slipping his pistol back into his bags, the orange-suited stallion turned and headed up the street, heading toward the epicenter of the city. The soft ticking on his rad meter on his leg flared up again as he got himself to a trot. It's just the wind. He tried to convince himself as he pushed himself to trot faster. It'll die down soon enough. I can't waste any more time. However, the incessant ticking was relentless picking up faster the more he tried to ignore it. The consistent noise forced him to a stop, and angrily he brought up the gauge to his face. As he inspected it, the needle wavered a quarter of the way up the meter in the light breeze. The magical radiation was much worse following this path, and he couldn't ignore his worsening rad sickness no longer. Should I go back? Looking behind him, the dark bones of the city sat miles down the road. He shook his head, sure that the risk of going through the downtown ruins was too high. I've already had enough shamblers today. He had to stick to the outskirts of the city. As he sat there and thought, the wind dropped again, and helped his rad meter to tick faster. I just need some rad away. He nodded. There's gotta be some around here somewhere, along the way north. Just a single packet will be enough for now. I just have to find it is all. If you are hearing this... The static-filled voice of a mare resonated through the empty and lonely streets. Sanctuary is real. Sanctuary, safe. We welcome all survivors who can make it to the north. His unsteady hooves shook on the teetering pile of rubble underneath him. The stallion listened intently, but his focus was not on the radio message that had started him on this journey so many months ago now. His prone body strained the charred boards that he was pressed up against, holding him up just enough so that he could see across the boulevard and into the small, dark grocery outlet. Food and medical treat... Available for all who make the journey. The small radio secured to the top of a junk-filled shopping cart fizzled with static. Each burst was accompanied by a higher stream of ticks from the orange-suited stallion's rad meter. Then, as it always had, the message ended, and the radio fell into a constant soft static. Who does this radio belong to? The stallion scanned the dark interior of the grocery store for movement. Have they died from exposure? Or did a shambler get them? He questioned if he should just move on and search elsewhere, but like earlier in the day, he couldn't bring himself to move. His eyes kept being drawn back again and again to the scorched pink butterfly sign that sat just inside the broken glass storefront. He licked his lips, anticipating the citrus flavor that the Radaway packets to be found inside surely still held. It was worth the risk. A calamitous clatter came from the rear of the dark store. A shambler? 
The stallion paused on the thought as a softly glowing green light moved among the shadows in the back, revealing a glowing pony trotting from the unseen back room. The stallion held his breath as the pony noisily made its way toward the front of the store. Empty cans and boxes were kicked out of the way as they approached. The crimson-coated unicorn mare who walked up to the shopping cart looked like any other ghoul to the stallion, but didn't act like one. Most of her white mane had fallen out, and the yellow flower print dress she wore was stained with mud and dirt. Still, she dumped a collection of sparkle batteries and magical energy cells from her magic into her cart. Without any hesitation, the glowing mare turned around and headed back into the dark interior. The ticking of the rad meter felt like a ticking clock to the stallion. Each tick was one moment closer that he moved towards a painfully slow death in the silent city. He didn't have time to sit and wait for this mare to finish looting the place. He meant to get whatever he could and bolt as far and fast to the north as his legs could carry him. I can bluff all I want. His horn glowed softly as he pulled out his empty revolver again. He stared into the store as the glowing mare disappeared into the back room again. If it comes to it, I'll just run. Taking several stiff breaths, the stallion nodded to himself. With a care to not make more noise than he needed, he clambered back down from his perch on the old ruins across the street from the shop. His boots squeaked slightly as he skid down onto the dirt, but he was relieved to have the steady ground under himself again. As quickly as he felt was silent enough, he dashed his way across the street toward the store. With his heart beating wildly, He came up into the faded bricks that lined the storefront, pressing himself against it. As he did, he pulled his revolver close to his face mask and carefully cocked back the hammer. Glancing over at the grocery cart, he could see the softly glowing face of it flicker. Its wooden casing cracked and covered in soot. The static had most likely hidden the majority of the noises he'd made on his way over and from inside the store, the sounds of the mare searching the back room hit his ears. Peeking his head out, he took a quick glance around the store. Just in his initial look, only a few flickering lights still worked inside the various displays and coolers. However, one in a rear aisle held his attention. Under a burned-up Ministry of Peace pink butterfly sign, Two packets of Radaway sat pinned under a collapsed shelf. There were so many medical supplies with them as well, forgotten and untouched amid all the other various things in the shop. The yellow bags themselves glowed dimly, as even now they cleansed the air around them of magical radiation. The stallion's eyes were locked on them, and how they alone backlit the need of every other medical supply he could potentially need in the future. I need it all. The whole shelf if I can get it. The stallion's focus wandered for a moment until he could reassure himself. Only if there's time after the rat away. His magic reached out, making his horn shine brighter as a green glow enveloped the pinned pouches. Lightly, he pulled at them, yet they refused to move. Harder, he pulled, slowly increasing the strength of his tug. The display itself shuddered, with the fallen shelf sliding dangerously close to falling down to the floor. The stallion let out a deep breath, pausing to think about how to proceed. As he did, the mare in the back slammed something to the floor, and the dislodged shelf clattered noisily to the floor. Shit, shit, shit! The stallion cringed. He wrapped his magic around the rataway and pulled it stiffly toward him again. The startled mare's hoofsteps came closer from the back room, and the stallion pulled back against the brick storefront as much as he could. He focused himself, pointing his revolver toward the back door as the mare appeared. He'd only brought the rataway halfway across when her eyes fell upon the floating medicine. The startled ghoul mare gave out a gasp as she saw the head of the ragged orange-suited stallion pointing a gun at her from the front of the shop. 
she froze up on the spot, with her softly glowing eyes locked onto the stallions. Slowly, her glance shifted to the gun and to the Rataway packets that still hung in the stallion's magic halfway across the room. The stallion felt every bit as weak and feeble as he'd become with his heart pounding against his chest. Sweat beaded and rolled down his horn and forehead as they stood in silence. The ghoul mare moved slowly, making the stallion stiffen his shaky grip on his empty revolver. Carefully, she raised her hooves, offering him a nervous, if harmless, smile. It could be a ruse, the stallion thought to himself. Still, she doesn't look like she has a weapon. With a quick flick, the stallion turned the gun away, pointing it to the Rataway and then to himself. The ragged ghoul mare seemed to understand, nodding slowly to him. The shallow, ragged breaths that filled his helmet made the stallion's already strained focus drift for a moment. His magic faltered, and he was forced to choose between what to focus on. His empty revolver clattered to the ground as he chose instead to firmly grip the medical bags. With a wheezing gasp, he pushed himself off the storefront wall and into a gallop down the road. The glowing bags quickly followed him as the ghoul mare scrambled and fumbled for the useless weapon. His hooves hammered and whisked him away along the wet and cracked pavement, splashing through errant potholes. Lost to him was the sound of the soft clicks and muffled obscenities offered by the mare behind him as he disappeared northward around the street corner ahead. The ragged stallion huffed with long-winded breaths as he ran, each draw eliciting a gurgling rattle from the filter in his suit. He worried that he would damage the filtration system with this much exertion, but he had to risk it. As hard as he could, the stallion continued, turning away from street to street in a roughly northward direction, while he searched for a place to lay low. The next street he happened upon offered a shadow that stretched across the sky above him. The sight of the crumbling highway overpass overwhelmingly held his attention as he slowed himself down. He traced a part of the collapsed highway back to the top of what looked like to be a burned-out four-story office building, seeing that it made a makeshift ramp. As he thought about it, the burning in the stallion's lungs caught up to him, and the stallion nearly stumbled to the ground before hacking and choking. He was barely able to wrench his helmet off his head in time before his heaving coughs turned into him expelling half a stomach's full of blood and yellow bile. After a few good wrenching heaves, he panted heavily, dropping onto the ground to try to regain his breath. From his spot on the pavement, the stallion stared up into the dark, overcast skies above him. The opaque cloud cover wasn't as solid today and rays of sunlight cast down through various small gaps. He felt his mind empty as he stared into the serene sight above, and again he was surrounded by peaceful silence. The stallion groaned as he regained his breath, looking over to see the two Rataway packets lying a hoof's distance away where they'd fallen out of his magical grasp. His horn glowed again, and his magical aura pulled the bags of medicine closer. Carefully, he pulled them against his chest and rolled himself back onto his hooves. It was... it was worth the risk. Looking up at the overpass again, he spotted the burned-out cab of a still upright shipping truck. The truck was a burned-out bulk, but even so, provided more security and shelter than the stallion could ever have asked for on a short notice. If I stay up there, I should be safe enough for the night. The stallion, as many survivors now did, dreamt of happier days as he slept. Be careful up there, Amethyst! A middle-aged teal-coated mare called out to a young purple filly playing in a tree. The bright afternoon sun radiated down through fluffy white clouds and the green leaves of the old oak. Okay, Mommy. Ah! It's all right, I've got you, hon. The stallion groaned as he caught the falling filly in his magic. Oof! You're getting to be a big enough girl that I can hardly hold you anymore. 
<laughs> you did it though, Daddy. You saved me. The young filly giggled as the stallion held her close. You saved me. The stallion gasped for air. Wildly, the stallion fumbled at his helmet and tore it off himself, throwing it across the interior of the truck with a noisy clatter. Sweating and wheezing, the stallion took long, labored gulps of air. Outside of the glow that the blast crater gave off, it was still dark outside. Too dark, he surmised, to have been anywhere close to sunrise. He torqued himself around on the floor and hoofed it at the case on the back of his protective suit in annoyance. With a sharp click, the back flap of the air recycler flicked open, revealing two round talismans inside. The stallion's horn lit up, flipping a small lever inside the case. With a squeak, he wrapped his magic around one of the two air filtering talismans and pulled it out. The talisman cracked in half, broken from its extended use. With an unceremonious toss, the stallion flicked the depleted halves out of the window of the truck. That's the last time I'll forget to take my helmet off before sleeping. He wished that he could more physically vent his frustrations, but he'd already made enough noise as it was. Instead, he reached out and grabbed his helmet again. He pulled it back to him slowly, squinting as his magical aura illuminated the empty Radaway bag clinging to the tape visor. He stowed the other one in his pack, knowing that he'd need it at some point on the road. He stripped the empty bag away from the helmet as he put it back on. The rubber seals squeaked softly as they pressed together, and its pair of latches gave out soft clicks as they locked. After a moment of hesitation, the stallion took in a long, deep breath. The secondary filter talisman released a wave of stale air as he drew it in, and gave a soft hiss as he exhaled. The stallion collapsed back onto the burned remains of the truck's floor. Taking slow, deep breaths, the stallion fought back the resurfacing memories of his dreams. Still, it was ultimately a losing fight. He had nights like this in each of the previous silent cities before this one. He knew that if he fell back asleep, he'd only be brought back to the world that would never be again. So instead, the stallion curled himself up and sobbed quietly waiting for the sun to rise and brighten the dim wasteland skies once more. Today, today I'll be done with the city and back on the road to sanctuary. The rad meter let off slow, intermittent crackles as the orange-suited stallion wound his way over the rubble of a collapsed factory building. The leaking chemicals combined with the rain that had swept through yesterday had left the patchy ground flooded with a mix of prismatic toxins. Deep, struggling gasps emit from the stallion as he climbed his way over the one twisted pile of metal to the next. The groaning from the fatigued and collapsed industrial buildings all around him made it hard to hear his surroundings. However, the stallion knew that it just as easily masked his own movements, and used that to move faster than he normally felt comfortable with. Solely on his mind was the fact that just past the next building laid the entrance to the highway that led out of the city and northward toward Sanctuary. The mid-morning sun blazed away above the dark gray clouds that hung overhead and a smoky haze had drifted over the northern half of the city. As the stallion clambered over the last of the large industrial ruins, he found himself looking out over what remained of the forest that had once thrived around the frills of the city. Stretching over the ever larger hills, the dead forest lay scattered among them like the littered bones of an old world. Some of the ashen, blackened trees still crackled as they burned despite the rain in the last few days. Flickers of green bale fire among the dead forest still burned in sheltered pockets. But none of that interested the stallion. For a fair distance to the west, he could see the old highway. 
Elated, it didn't take long for him to make his way there. As with the other desolate cities, crowds of burned out vehicles crammed the highway entrance. So many had tried to flee the end, attempting to save themselves had only worked to ensure their own demise. The stallion stopped at a collection of crashed taxi carts and looked around them. The corpses of emoliated ponies still sat in the empty husks of their failed salvation, most still laden with all the excess that the old world had convinced ponies was so necessary in their lives. The stallion debated going through a few of the vehicles for anything useful, but hesitated as he thought about how much time it would take. As he had done in the past, the stallion turned his thoughts away from the dead and their belongings and instead began to focus again on traveling the road ahead. His ears, however, perked as the sound of hoofsteps greeted them. Shit. With a soft gasp, the stallion lowered himself down. He looked for a place to hide, frantically searching for a larger hulk to hide behind. With a scrambling dash, he worked himself around the cab of an overturned milk truck before stopping to listen again as he pressed himself against the metal roof of it. All right, we're out of the city. A labored, tired-sounding stallion spoke with a weak voice. Don't worry, it won't be much farther. Please walk by. Cautiously, the orange-suited stallion pressed himself up harder against the metal truck. Tick, tick, tick. The rad meter on the stallion's leg kicked up again. He moved to silence it, but as he did, part of the truck buckled against the pressure he gave. With a metallic bang and the sound of shattered glass, something inside the vehicle fell and broke the bottles within. The orange stallion froze up, listening as silence filled the air once more. Uh, hello? The stranger called out, pausing for an answer before a raspy cough worked its way from their muzzle. It soon worked itself into the same uncontrollable heaving that the orange-suited stallion had become so familiar with on his journey. Run or fight? The orange-suited stallion thought as he took the stranger's coughing fit as an opportunity to size them up. With hesitant, slow steps, he moved his way to the rear edge of the overturned truck. His legs wobbled under his tense form, but the rubber-padded boots of his suit did their best to keep him quiet. Peeking his head slightly around the back, he cast his gaze on the wandering stranger. The stallion was mostly cloaked in a thick wool blanket. Worn over him, most likely to keep the magical fallout off of him, the black-coated stallion had open sores on him from magical radiation sickness, and what little of his pink mane he had left struggling to hold on to his scalp. As the blanket-laden stallion let out one last dry heave, the orange-suited stallion noticed the green equestrian military fatigues that still clothed the stranger. Hesitantly, the suited stallion pulled back around the side of the truck again. I... I guess I'm hearing things again. The stallion groaned as he began to shuffle forward. Need to get this sanctuary. Come on, it's only another day or two. Wait, sanctuary? The orange-suited stallion stiffened at the mention of his destination. Before the stallion got ahead of himself, he took a slow, steady few breaths. But can I trust him? It could all be a ruse. The blanketed stallion dropped into another fit of hacking coughs that broke the hazmat-suited stallion's train of thought. No, there's no way he's healthy enough to be a threat. Besides, what would Jasmine or Amethyst have thought if I let some pony like him die when I could have helped? With a sigh, the orange-suited stallion pushed himself up to his hooves and walked around the side of the overturned truck. Wait. The orange-suited stallion called out, prompting the blanketed stallion to freeze up mid-step. I, I, I ain't got anything for you to take. The blanketed stallion stood as stiff as a board, 
His words, however, felt as shaky to the orange-suited stallion as half the rubble he'd crossed so far. Bandits took everything already, uh, except my blanket here. But but you, you, you can have it if you want. It ain't gonna l- last much longer without r- Radaway right anyway. Are you going to sanctuary? The orange-suited stallion asked, praying to any pony that this wouldn't be his last mistake. If so, I can share the Radaway right I have if you'll walk with me. R- really? The blanketed stallion turned around. His John diced tired green eyes teared up as his muzzle quivered. That would be really nice. His legs shook as he nearly stumbled turning around. We haven't seen any pony who'd even be so kind in so long. We? The orange stallion asked. From under the black stallion's blanket, a pair of sharp green eyes peered out. The small pink filly from the other day poked her muzzle out from it, stunning the suited stallion. To him, she was the ghost of his daughter, and to him, he was a second chance to redeem himself. She let a hesitant whimper escape her muzzle as she peered upon the orange suited stallion once more. Shh, it's okay, little one. He's going to be our friend. The black stallion spoke softly to her before he turned his attention to the orange-suited stallion. I hope you don't mind. My daughter doesn't speak much around strangers, but she's who I'm trying to get to the sanctuary. The stallion smiled as he pulled the thick blanket back around her, sheltering her from the outside world. I I think I can make it there, but she needs more Radaway if she's going to make it. I only have the one. The orange-suited stallion spoke up. His horn lit up, opening the flap on his pack and drawing out the single packet still stored inside. But she can have it. (laughs) Thank you. The black stallion broke down into sobs. In them, he was interrupted by another gurgling, hacking fit of coughs. This one was short-lived but to the orange-suited stallion, it punctuated the urgency to stay on the road. Regaining his breath, the blackened stallion continued, We lost her mother on the last day. She's all I got left. Which is why we should get moving. The orange-suited stallion nodded before he started to walk again. Yeah, you're right. The black stallion groaned as he got his hooves back under himself. The name's Red Glare, by the way. Reaching a shaky, emaciated hoof around under his blanket, he fumbled to open a set of saddlebags he wore underneath. He's reaching reaching for a weapon. The orange stallion thought as he felt his mane stand on end. Run. Get out of here. Sorry. I lied to you before. The black stallion laughed as he pulled his leg back. He extended his hoof toward the orange-suited stallion, holding out something small to him. A crumpled, bright yellow candy bar that had already been half-eaten. But to the orange-suited stallion, it was a more welcome sight than any weapon. We raided a small convenience store a quarter mile back or so. We've got a few more bars that we'll gladly share. Thank you. The orange-suited stallion spoke with immense relief. To tell you the truth, I'm just glad I'm not going to be walking in silence the rest of the way. Looking ahead down the line of burned-out cars, the stallion felt a genuinely happy smile pull across his muzzle. Even if it's only for a day or two, anything is better than being trapped in my own thoughts for once. With the sound that the orange-suited stallion never thought he'd hear again, a laugh filled the air. Yeah, I hear that. Red Glare nodded and gave out a scratch-filled laugh. Together, the three ponies smiled and talked as they walked away from the ruined city behind them. The world they'd known was gone, but for another few days, that didn't matter to them. 
For all the things that Pony Kind lost on the final day, the spirit of friendship had not perished, and instead lived on through the trio as they traveled northward in hope of the promised safe place to stay. As they walked, they left the lonely and desolate ruins of the city behind them, and it became silent once more. The quiet city, once a shining beacon of equine progress, sat waiting for the next traveler to fill it with the thoughts, hopes, and dreams of a brighter, better tomorrow.